World Stories on VR Television. I am Deborah Ndukaifi. This week we'll take a look at top stories making the rounds from across the globe. Major headlines in the week under review includes Right Group's Amnesty International called for a probe into abuses in the Ethiopia Tigray conflict. Furthermore, British Conservative Rishi Sunak was among the poised to become Prime Minister and Northern Ireland is on course for a second election this year. We bring you the stories and more after this short break. Don't go away. Starting from the African scene, 30 people have been killed and several more have been injured in a wave of intercommunal violence on Papua New Guinea's remote Trobriand Island, police said Tuesday. The long simmering dispute between two local football teams on sparsely policed Kiribinas Island first flared early this year in the wake of the country's general election, when residents of three villages stormed a government office Monday. Police and church elders could not contain the fight and we recorded 30 deaths and several many injured. Barkis said things got out of hand after the recent destruction of food gardens. Additional forces are now being sent from the mainland and the Trobirand Island are a group of low-lying low atolls in the South Pacific known, known for their ornate coral gardens that produce bananas, yams and taro. Rights Group Amnesty International has called for a probe into abuses in the Ethiopia Tigray conflict, saying every party involved in the war in northern Tigray has committed crimes against humanity. An Amnesty International specialist on Ethiopia and Eritrea told a press conference in Nairobi. The first formal peace talks between the warring sides is in the brutal two year conflict in Ethiopia's Tigray region entered day two in South Africa. Led by the African Union, the negotiations in Pretoria follow a surge in fierce fighting in the recent weeks that has alarmed the international community and triggered fears for civilians caught in the crossfire. The talks are being held at the South African Foreign Affairs Ministry headquarters. Uh, was committed by all the parties to the conflict. There is no innocent party which has not committed human rights violations in this conflict. All of them. So when I'm saying all the parties to the conflict, the Ethiopian National Defense Force, the Eritrean uh, Defense Forces, the Tigrayan Forces, the Amhara Special Force, the Amhara Fano Militia, all of them, they have committed serious human rights violations, including rape and sexual violence. British Conservative Rishi Sunak was on Monday poised to become Prime Minister and the country's first leader of colour after the dramatic decision by Boris Johnson to abandon an audacious political comeback. Just weeks after failing in the first attempt to lead the ruling Tories, Sunak could cap a stunning reversal in fortunes by winning the leadership as early as Monday afternoon following ex-Premier Johnson's unexpected move late Sunday. The contest triggered by outgoing leader Liz Truss' resignation on Thursday requires candidates to secure the support of at least 100 Conservative MPs by 2 p.m. on Monday. Sunak had crossed that threshold by Friday night ahead of declaring his candidacy on Sunday and amassing nearly 150 public nominations from Tory lawmakers. Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has vowed to bring stability and unity at a time of economic crisis after he was named the beleaguered conservative new leader. Sunak Hindu will be the UK's first Prime Minister of Colour following the implosion of Lee Truss' premiership after just 44 days. Sunak prevailed after Penny Mordaunt, the last rival left in the party's leadership race after Boris Johnson dramatically dropped out, failed to secure enough nominations from fellow Tory MPs. I owe so much to. The United Kingdom is a great country, but there is no doubt we face a profound economic challenge. We now need stability and unity, and I will make it my utmost priority to bring our party and our country together, because that is the only way we will overcome the challenges we face 
and build a better, more prosperous future for our children and our grandchildren. I pledge that I will serve you with integrity and humility, and I will work day in, day out to deliver for the British people. Now, Britain's King Charles III on Tuesday appointed new Conservative leader Rishi Sunak as the second Prime Minister of his reign, shortly after accepting the resignation of Liz Truss. Rishi Sunak on Tuesday became Britain's third Prime Minister this year and the first person of colour to lead the former imperial lead leader, vowing to mend its stricken finances after Liz Truss lasted just 49 days. Sunak spoke outside 10 Downing Street after his appointment by King Charles III, capping the latest extraordinary twist in United Kingdom politics following Boris Johnson's resignation in July. A powerful hurricane made landfall in western Mexico, causing heavy rains, flash flooding and landslides. Rosalind, a Category 3 hurricane, came ashore in Nayarit State with maximum winds of 195 km per hour. The hurricane has since been downgraded to a tropical cyclone and is expected to dissipate overnight. Images of its aftermath showed flooded roads and upturned vehicles in Nayarit with collapsed roofs and damaged homes in the worst affected area, Tequala. For the south along the coast in Sayulita, the people were pictured wading through and clearing mud from the streets in the area. Still on heavy rains. Heavy rains brought by an approaching, approaching storm triggered flooding and multiple landslides in the southern Philippines, killing at least 31 people as rescuers searched for missing residents. Authorities have evacuated thousands of people out of the part of tropical storm Nauge, which could possibly make landfall in Sama province in central Philippines, disaster officials said. The Interior Minister of Bank Samoro Autonomous Region in Mindanao, Nagwib Sinarimbo, says the rainfall in Magudino province had exceeded expectations. In the southern province of Sultan Kudarat, rescue workers used rubber boats to get to residents trapped in chest deep waters, images shared by the Coast Guard showed. And no fewer than 67 people have been confirmed dead as landslide and flood hit the southern Philippines. Reports reveal that rescuers are making efforts to save residents of a mountain village that was buried in mud. It was disclosed that a village called Kusiong accounted for many of the 50 deaths in the area around Datu Ondin, Sinusak town. The Civil Defense Office in the area said heavy overnight rain unleashed floods mixed with mud as well as rocks and fallen trees that buried the community. South Korea's military fired warning shots at a North Korean ship before dawn on Monday, deeming the vessel had crossed the adversary's disputed maritime border, prompting the North to return warning fire states and local media reported. A North Korean merchant vessel crossed what is known as the Northern Limit Line at 3.42 a.m. but retreated northwards after the South Navy fired warning shots. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff said, according to the Yonhap News Agency, Pyongyang Korean People's Army claimed a South Korean military vessel had invaded the de facto border by 2.5 to 5 kilometers, 1.5 to 3 miles, a few minutes later, and that the KPA fired 10 warning rounds from the country's west coast. The KPA's general staff once again sent a grave warning to the enemies who made a naval intrusion in the wake of such provocations as the recent artillery firing and loudspeaker broadcasting. Police have fired tear gas after clashes broke out and fires were lit at an overcrowded reception center for migrants in Cyprus, according to police and witnesses. At least one person needed a hospital treatment after being injured at the Ponaras reception facility about 22 kilometers west of the capital, Nicosia. People hold rocks and objects at each other, forcing many to flee in panic and firefighters rush to extinguish a blaze that sent blowing smoke into the sky. Migrants watch a fire outside Punara refuge camp during clashes on the outskirts of Nicosia. 
Police said clashes appear to have broken out between two people, two groups rather, in the center. The fires were extinguished by the fire brigade, but sporadic clashes continued until early afternoon. French President Emmanuel Macron hosts German Chancellor Olaf Scholz for lunch with the leaders hoping to pair back differences on energy and defense around and revitalize the European Union key double act. Oh, we're going on a short break and when we come back, we will take you through other world stories. Welcome back to World Stories on VR Television, where we'll bring you a summary of the top stories around the globe through the week. Now moving on, mourners attend the funeral of Palestinians killed in an overnight Israeli raid in the occupied West Bank city of Nablus. Six Palestinians were killed in sweeping Israelis' raid in the occupied West Bank, the Palestinian Health Ministry reported in what the army said was an assault targeting the emerging Lion's Den armed group. One of the men who died was unarmed, according to Palestinian health and security officials who said several Palestinian gunmen were also wounded. The violence erupted when Israeli security officer who had entered the town of Nablus was spotted by Palestinian security officers and militants, according to a spokesman for the Palestinian Now Fatah movement. U.S. had issued fresh sanctions on Iranian officials, including the head of a prison and Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps commanders over Tehran's brutal ongoing crackdown of protests. In a joint statement with the Treasury Department, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken noted the latest tranche of sanctions were imposed 40 days after the death of Masa Amini who died while in custody of Iran's so-called morality police. The U.S. has blamed Iran's morality police for the death of Amini, who was taken into custody in Tehran on September 13th for wearing her headscarf too loosely. Amini, 22 years of age and Kurdish origin, died three days later. The Treasury imposed sanction on 10 people, including two senior IRGC leaders and provincial officials from Sistan and Baluchestan province, which has seen some of the deadliest violence against protesters since demonstration began last month. Now, French President Emmanuel Macron hosted German Chancellor Olaf Scholz for lunch with the leaders hoping to pair back differences on energy and defense and revitalize the European Union key double act. Hackles have been raised on both sides since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine less than three months after Scholz took office last December prompted crisis, decision taken under the pressure of the war and its knock-on effects. Berlin moved to spend up to 200 billion euros, spent subsidizing soaring gas prices and refusal to consider an EU-wide energy price cap netto Paris and other European capitals which fear the effect on their energy costs. France also sees commitments to cooperate on defense procurement, floundering given Germany's plans for a shared missile shield with other NATO nations using American equipment. 
Police clamped down on two separate demonstrations to protest against the arrest of Sebnem Finashi, head of Turkish Medical Association, a group called Women Strong Together, came together first to denounce the arrest of the president of the Turkish Medical Association, Sebnem Finashi, who was detained on, t on Wednesday rather, for remarks over an alert usage of chemical agents against PKK militants in Kurdistan region of Iraq. In a declaration posted on Twitter, the group said the only crime of financing was asking questions demanding investigation of chemical weapons findings. The police detained 15 protesters as it forcefully pushed the crowd and journalists using their riot shield. Now on Northern Ireland is on course for second election this year after efforts by the United Kingdom government to resolve months of political stalemate over its post Brexit status failed to secure a breakthrough. The Britain's Northern Ireland minister, Chris Hidden Harris, held talks with the political parties in a fresh bid to get them to form a new executive. If no agreement is reached by Friday, London will be legally required to call early elections for the devolved assembly in the volatile province. Northern Ireland has been without has been without a functioning government since February when the pro-UK DUP collapsed the executive over its staunch opposition to post-Brexit trade rules. It wants the so-called Northern Ireland pr Protocol agreed by London and Brussels as part of Britain's 2019 Brexit deal overhauled or scrapped entirely. Richard Sunak is bringing back the ban on fracking that his predecessor, Liz Truss, controversially lifted. During his first outing in the hot seat as Prime Minister questions, the former Chancellor says he stands by the manifesto where fracking is concerned. Sunak's spokesperson then explicitly, explicitly confirmed he was reinstating the ban. The 2019 Tory manifesto put a moratorium on fracking in England after opposition from local communities and environmentalists. The ban was dropped by Liz Truss last month as part of her plan to tackle spiraling energy costs but said it would only be used where there was consent from locals for it to proceed. Musk has, Elon Musk has indicated he would reinstate Trump's Twitter, Twitter account, but the former U.S. president has not said anything about returning to the platform. The former U.S. president Donald Trump, who was banned from Twitter after multiple provocation tweets during the U.S. Capitol riot last year, hailed Elon Musk's takeover of the microblogging platform, saying he was very happy that Twitter was now in sane hands. Soon after, speculation started brewing of whether the former United States president will be allowed back on Twitter. Now, students of Brazil's School of Santa Claus celebrated their graduation ahead of the Christmas season outside the Maracana Stadium in Rio de Janeiro, with the hope that the upcoming new Brazil's president would take care of children founded in 1993. The school prepared its students for a job acting like Santa Claus in malls or private events. Commenting on this, Lima Chemchirim, director of Brazil's Santa Claus School, said the mission of Santa Claus is to bring peace, love, happiness, affection, tenderness, hugs, whatever government we have. Paulo Roberto Santo, graduated Santa Claus, says he hoped that when whoever comes to occupy the presidency of Brazil does the best for the people, especially the children, education and health. He added that the children are those who are the most in need of this time. Lula, levar o abraço, seja o governo que for. país, eu espero que principalmente pelas crianças, educação e saúde, que as crianças é o que mais estão precisando nesse momento. Ah. Now, prosecutors in Spain dropped corruption and fraud charges against football star Neymar and others accused in a trial over the Brazilians' 2013 move from Santos to Barcelona. In a dramatic move, the prosecutor announced the withdrawal of the charges against all the accused and for all the allegations they had faced. Neymar had said he did not remember if he took part in the negotiations which led to an agreement sealed in 2011 with Barcelona over his transfer two years later to the Spanish side from Brazilian club Santos. 
Spanish prosecutors had sought a two-year prison term for Neymar, a key member of the Brazil's team that will be heading to the World Cup in Qatar next month, and the payment of 10 million euro fine. Delitos que se han, eh, por los que incluso el Ministerio Fiscal eh, acusaba hasta el momento, y es por lo que se interesa la libre absolución de todos los acusados. Tenía opciones de, de muchos clubes eh, que, que querían que fuera a jugar ahí, pero mi sueño siempre fue jugar en Barça. Eh, yo desde niño quería jugar ahí por los jugadores que tenía por ser en Barcelona y bueno, yo sigo siempre en mi corazón y mi corazón siempre pide a Barça. Y hay un administrador. Brazil's president's candidate held their final rallies in a scramble for votes on the eve of a white knuckle election that has deeply polarized Latin America's largest economy. The charismatic leftist Luis Lenacio Lula da Silva, tarnished by graft allegations, remained a hairbreadth ahead in the polls after a narrow first round victory. However, many saw the many saw the race against far right incumbent Jay Bolsonaro as too close to call. The runoff campaign has been a dirty gloves off battle for every last vote between two men adored and hated in almost equal measures. Critical policy issued as such as the economy corruption and streaking Amazon took a backseat to personal attacks. Now, new Twitter owner Elon Musk made it super clear he has not yet made any changes to the social media platform's content moderation policies. Musk had earlier tweeted that those banned from the site will not be reinstated until a review by a content moderation council. He followed his sum, this some hours later after the fraud, after information stated in a post to be super clear we have not yet made any chances any changes rather to Twitter's content moderation policies. The 51 year old also responded to a suggestion by conservative journalists that Twitter have a different game mode. And that's all on World Stories. Many thanks for watching. I am Deborah Ndukaifi. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs.